Let's continue now on America's Forum. While the White House apparently has no plan in place for troops, it seems they're formulating a plan for Ebola-infected doctors and medical aides, and at least according to one report, they may be formulating a plan to bring in non-Americans who are Ebola patients. Whole lot to digest. Let's take a look at what the Washington Times has reported. The White House is planning to bring medical personnel infected with Ebola back here to the U.S. for treatment. They claim the only way to get other countries to also send medical teams into that hot zone in West Africa is to promise that the U.S. will be the world's medical leader and eventually the nation that serves as the backstop at all of this. Is our nation really ready to do that? And should that be our goal in terms of public health? Well, let's invite in our panel. Uh, right here on the anchor desk with me, Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate, and joining us via Skype, board certified physician, Dr. Sanjay Jain. Gentlemen, again, welcome to America's Forum. Sanjay, in New York, the staff at Bellevue Hospital has become so consumed with treating the doctor uh, who has Ebola that they've transferred ICU patients to another hospital. If that's going on at, in Bellevue Hospital in New York, what's going on with other hospitals uh, that might have to deal with an influx of Ebola patients? Well, uh, uh, thank you, J.D., for having me on the show. And it's going to happen everywhere. It's already happened in Dallas where they cleared out the whole ICU floor. And it's going to happen in other floors as well. So this is going to happen uh, wherever Ebola patients are being treated. Uh, Nick, you've been following this story and all the uh, all the ins and outs and reversals and new policies. Mm -hmm. But there is more news that the administration, we touched on it a, a bit last week, but now apparently there is evidence the administration is contemplating bringing in non-Americans who may have Ebola? That's right. There's a State Department memo that's come to light. I was reading it today. I mean, it says that the U.S. needs to take a leadership role here and ask others and other countries to admit even non-citizens for treatment here. Now, the truth is treatment in the U.S. is really good. That's why we have the, the great recovery rate that we've had. But are we really prepared to treat 10,000 people who've been infected so far? If you believe the CDC, we may see as many cases as 1.4 1 million by January. I, I would suggest that based on my talk, interviews with doctors and healthcare officials, we are just not, our healthcare system is not prepared to handle this. A couple of minutes remaining in this segment. Let's go back to Dr. Jane. Uh, Sanjay, four cases thus far have been diagnosed in this country, three of those healthcare workers who contracted it by treating infected patients. If foreign Ebola patients are transported to the U.S., what does that mean for our system? We heard Nick's take, but you're a doctor, so we got to hear what you think would happen. Well, we already have a staffing issue, and we also have a resources issue. So we're really triaging a lot of these foreign patients that might be coming here. Uh, where, who's paying for this? Who's footing the bill? It's the taxpayers here, and it's going to be astronomical. The, the, the bill that the Dallas hospital went through, all the resources, is really astronomical. So that's only one patient. What's going to happen when we get the floodgates open, and it's going to be a problem? Well, and let's talk more about that, Nick. Uh, in, in my position as a recovering member of Congress, we, we talk about this administration and a redistribution of wealth. Now it appears this is all about a redistribution of health. Sure, we've had Obamacare, but this kind of acute illness bringing foreigners in who already have the disease? Well, look at what happened in these individual cases we've seen in Dallas. Look at the tremendous chaos that we saw. Hundreds of people were affected. Dozens were monitored. Two nurses were infected. That was one case. Multiply that by 10,000 and you can imagine what would happen. And as Dr. Jane suggests, we're already seeing doctor shortages. ERs are already stressed. So I just can't see how this is a workable policy. Let's hope it's a trial balloon there floating. Well, obviously, there are more implications to this policy apparently, quote, being considered. There are other things we need to talk about as Ebola continues to occupy center stage in terms of health in this country and international health care policy. We're going to ask Dr. Jane and Nick Tate to hang around. We ask you to hang around, too. America's Forum will continue. Our discussion on Ebola will continue right after this time out here on Newsmax TV.